Hey there viewers, how many times a week do you take your pet to the groomers? Is your dog as cool as a cucumber throughout the process? Or are they a bit difficult when it comes to cutting their hair? Let's face it, no one can better understand your pet than you. You know how to keep them calm and you know what style suits them best. Why don't you take a knack at cutting your dog's hair at home? We know you're afraid they won't keep still throughout, but stick around till the end of the video for a hack that solves those worries the right tools, the right shampoo, and the right way to cut, we've got you covered on all fours. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Inforama for more informative content. Let's get started on how to cut dog hair at home. Step 1. Gather your tools. While it might not be recommended, people usually cut their own hair with a pair of kitchen scissors. It gets the job done, and that's pretty much what anyone would want. However, when it comes to your canine, you might want to steer clear of those kitchen scissors. Why? Because while the tip of those scissors is sharp enough to cut your own hair, it isn't nearly as sharp enough to cut your pet's hair. Animal hair gets mangled, knotted, and sometimes infested with ticks and bugs. Their hair isn't washed that regularly either, and can be a bit stiff. Using ordinary kitchen scissors would put your pet in unnecessary stress, and you might end up hurting your dog. Use professional equipment. Most people would think that professional dog grooming equipment costs an arm and a leg, but it's actually cheaper to have the armamentarium at home than it is to routinely take your dog to the groomers. Here's what you'll need. Shampoo, conditioner, dryer, clippers, scissors, brush, and adhesive tape. There are a few additional things groomers would use for a more refined look, but these are good enough for simple at-home grooming. There are several different types of shears that can be used. For example, straight ones are used for general cutting, curved ones for rounding off the layers, thinning shears for problem areas, and rounded safety tip scissors for cutting around the face and the tail. If you're unsure about what equipment to use, you could take your pet to the groomers and observe the equipment they use and what for. Step 2. Understand your pet's coat. Dogs come in all shapes, sizes, and coats. Your pet Yorkie might have a different coat than your neighbor's pet Maltese. Understanding your pet's coat is crucial in order to give them the best servicing that they need. For example, curly-haired coats such as the characteristic of poodles require special moisturizing shampoo for optimal results and you'd have to use a mix of cutting shears in some areas and clippers in others. A Westie has coarse hair and would require an electric razor. Boxers and pit bulls would require a trim, and if they do, they just need cutting from a few parts. Study up on your pet's breed to give them the best grooming you possibly can. Step 3. Bathe and Brush Bathe your pet to remove any dirt from their coat. You might have noticed some groomers start brushing their client's coat without bathing them. This is usually done when the dog has a well-kept coat without any knots and entanglements. However, for someone giving their pet servicing at home, it might be a good idea to start off with a bath. Use a neutral shampoo while bathing your pet and put pressure on their paws and around their muzzles. This is where they get the most knots. Bathe them thoroughly, but make sure to avoid any water getting into their eyes and ears. Try getting earplugs to keep any water from getting into your pet's ears. However, if your pet isn't complying, don't force them. Just do your best to avoid any chemicals and water getting in. Once your dog is all cleaned up, pat them down with a towel and let them sit out for a minute before brushing their hair. Use a hair dryer to dry your pet's hair as you brush it out. For general use, you should use any standard dog brush. However, if there are a few unmanageable knots, you might want to go in with finer combs. Step 4. Cut the body hair first. Start by cutting around the animal's hind legs and its abdomen. This is usually referred to as general cutting. Use straight shears for general cutting or an electric razor. In either case, use instruments that are thoroughly sanitized and approved for dog grooming. In case you're using scissors, make sure their edges are clean, sharp, and oiled. Why oiled? To keep them from hurting your pet. Cut hair in a forward to back motion or in the direction where their coat grows. Make sure you've decided on the length beforehand. If you're using an electric razor, you might have to go in once or twice to get the optimal length. A little unevenness is expected. Do not overdo it. Step 5. Cut around their underbelly. When cutting hair around an animal's underbelly, you might want to cut a tad bit more. Obviously, not enough to hurt your pet. However, the underbelly harbors a lot of bacteria and urine. This area is usually the most difficult to clean and groomers would recommend removing as much hair as you can from a dog's underbelly. 
However, you need to be careful of their privates. Keep a little hair around just to cushion the area. Step 6. Cut around the paws. Your pet's paw pads are incredibly sensitive, and you'd want to keep yourself from accidentally trimming their nails. Trimming a dog's nails is a whole other feat in itself. Never use shears and razors to trim your pet's nails. Use round-tip safety scissors to cut around your pet's paw pads. Work evenly to remove any hair that's sticking out of their paws or goes beyond them. Once you're done with cutting around the pads, use curved scissors to even out the hair over the paws. Step 7. Cutting around their face This cannot be stressed enough. Never use razors around your pet's face. Razors give you little control and while they're considered efficient and harmless in trimming hair or any other part of your furry friend, they're strictly to be avoided around in animal sensitive areas such as the face. When cutting around the face, make sure you use adhesive tape to pull back their ears and keep them from getting in the way. Additionally, look out for tear stains around the eyes. These need to be cut with a little more effort, and hair around the eyes needs to be thoroughly cleaned. When cutting around an animal's face, make sure your pet is calm. If your animal is being overly giddy, they might move your hand and, in turn, hurt themselves. Use professional shears, especially for cutting hair around the face. Step 8. Use thinning shears for problem areas. Thinning shears are added in a groomer's armamentarium to even out the trim. They bring the whole look together and are especially useful for problem areas. What are problem areas? Matted patches of thick hair or areas where you feel your pet is particularly sensitive. That is, they won't keep still while you run shears over these areas. Step 9. Use a hair dryer. When using a hair dryer after cutting your pet's hair, you'll want to make sure you go over their entire body. You should ideally use a brush at this stage to make your dog look as sharp as they possibly can. Groomers would usually make use of a hair dryer to get rid of any hair that's been cut but is stuck to their body. These cut pieces of hair can end up being irritating or painful for your pet. Their edges are pretty sharp and they might annoy your dog, prompting you to think you've done something wrong. Step 10. Reward them. At the end of any grooming session, it's important to reward your pet for a job well done. Pets are rarely, if ever, inclined to sit still while they're being given a bath or having their hair cut. However, if you train your pet to know that there's a treat at the end of the session, they'll be on their best behavior. This is known as positive reinforcement and encourages your pet to behave, albeit out of greed, but no complaints here. Bonus. How do you keep your dog steady while grooming? In case your pet is moving around too much while you're trying to bathe and groom them, you might want to throw in a little distraction to keep them steady. The best way to do this would be to slather on some peanut butter onto a silicon mat and let them focus on their treat instead of the shears. Alright, comment down below if you know of any other cool grooming tips. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to Inforama, and check out some of our other videos. We'll see you in the next one.